All right, we are live. This is the Gators Online Recruiting Show. I am Keith Niebuhr. That is Corey Bender. We're both with Gators Online. we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, the orange and blue game was this past Saturday. That really means the conclusion of spring practice at the University of Florida. During the last five to six weeks, the Gators had a ton of recruits on campus. Not a lot of guys for the spring game, but that mm -hmm. dynamic has kind of changed. Now, more kids now go to practices during the spring than the spring game because you get more one-on-one -on -one time with the staff. But still a fairly good turnout Saturday, but really uh, a strong turnout the last five to six weeks in Gainesville. So today, Corey and I are going to tell you about guys we think Florida has made a pretty good progress with this spring. We'll give you a handful of guys. Uh, we're going to talk about guys we think Florida sits in good uh, a good spot with as we enter the evaluation period, which begins today for college coaches. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the quarterbacks. So we're going to take your questions. So if you just bear with us, we will get to as many questions as possible. But Corey, just a, just a quick overview from you. Was it a productive spring for the Florida staff on the recruiting trail? Yeah, I, it was productive, but I think it could have been a little bit better. I know a lot of people have been asking us, hey, are you guys worried about not having as many commits right now? That's more of a summer thing, but I think overall they, they got some key pieces in. They're trending with some other highly ranked guys, and as we see in recruiting nowadays, it's going to take time. Not every kid comes off the market in spring. I think a lot of people want these kids to come on visits and you know pop and be in the moment and make that commitment, but it's more of a business-like thing, especially with these highly ranked recruits that Florida's recruiting. So I think given the kind of wait-and-see approach we kind of assumed Florida was going to get from kids, knowing that, hey, this is a big season from them, they still have about a handful of commits, and you know, obviously, right now. So I think um, it could be a little bit better, but I don't think it's definitely been a disappointment, though. All right. So right now, let's just do a quick overview. Florida's got five commitments and the number 17 recruiting class in the country. The, of the five commitments, three of them are four-star guys. Jalen Wiggins, the edge from Tallahassee. Peyton Joseph, the interior offensive lineman from Houston County, Georgia. Warner Robbins, the Bucky's exit in that area. I know everybody loves Bucky's. Uh, that'll tell you where that school is. Waltez Clark, the other four-star running back from Tampa Plant, who ran a PR, personal record, 10.82 seconds in the 100 meters last week. Uh, very good for a running back over in that 200-pound yep. range, and he's getting faster. He's only a junior, guys. So you like those guys. And then two three-stars, Josiah Abdullah, receiver from College Park Woodward Academy, where the coach is John Hunt, former Florida Gator, starting offensive lineman. And then – Florida also has an offensive lineman committed, offensive tackle. So of the five commitments, Corey, two are offensive linemen. Yeah. The tackle is Enoch Wangoy. He's from England. And when he committed, Corey, I got to be honest, I hadn't heard of the guy. I don't mm -hmm. think you had heard of the guy. I think, I think a lot of people have yeah. heard of him. And, and it turns out our evaluation team at On3 looked at his, his video. So did the evaluation teams at 24-7 Sports, Rivals, and some others. And it, it, his film's very good, and he's got an NFL body. We list him at 6'8", but he told me he's uh, – 6'7", 315 in that range, former basketball player. So he's got the footwork. So you got the NFL body, you got the footwork, you got the reach, uh, and you got basketball-type athleticism. Yeah. Those are the guys that are making NFL tackles these days. So Florida's going to have to hold off some schools, but he seems locked in after visiting the Gators over the weekend. So those are your five commitments right now. So, Corey, give me a few guys that you think Florida made significant progress with during the six weeks of spring visits to Gainesville? Give me some guys that just off the top of your head that you feel like they made a move with. This does stay with offensive line, Zaire Addison. He just visited on Thursday and Saturday. And, you know, he's another guy with a prototypical type body, a big time uh, target for them. Florida was in his top group, you know, for much of the past year, but kind of towards the back end. But I think right now you have Florida State, Oregon, schools like that. And I think Florida's kind of in that top tier now after this past week. Um, you know, I mean, I think with John DeCoster, the co-offensive line coach, he said that's the most detail-oriented coach he's came across in recruiting. So Florida's on the come up with him. You know, they're going to get an official over the summer as well. So everything's going well with him. And that's a guy, obviously, fans need to keep eyes on. I think another one is Christian Gass, a linebacker out of Georgia. You know, he visited in January, got an offer at that time, came back again about a few weeks ago. Another, it kind of reminds me of Grayson Howard. He's a big, you know, Mike linebacker, almost about six foot four, like I said. Um, a guy that Florida is very high on. I think Florida is a real shot at you know coming out on top. He's going to take visits and you know over the summer he wants to decide before the uh, before his senior year. So 
you know, proximity is in Florida's favor. That's a kid to really keep an eye on. And another guy you and I have both talked about quite a bit is Caleb Singleton, a kid out of Fleming Island. Um, played cornerback, you know, the last couple of years, but he's moving to safety as a senior. That's where Florida wants to see him as well. Another track kid, um, really good 100 meter time. So um, I think that's a guy I think Florida fans are going to keep monitoring very closely. He has an OV set to Rutgers. That's the only other school along with Florida. But I think as time goes on, Florida keeps prioritizing him. I yeah. think that's a guy I could see in the class. Well, I know our fans are, hang- oh, are listening to you. you. Just said Rutgers. Oh my God. Oh dear God. But LSU just offered. You remember yeah. who LSU's defensive backs coach is? Guy by the name of Corey Raymond, who was at Florida, obviously. So yeah. uh, LSU now involved. We feel good about where Florida sits. Corey, so you named three guys Florida's on the come up with: Caleb Singleton, the safety from Fleming Island. Uh, you mentioned Christian Glass, the receiver. It's, it's Glass. I always linebacker. Linebacker. Uh, linebacker. Christian. What did I say? Receiver. Christian yeah. Glass, the linebacker from Georgia. Yeah. And who was the third guy you mentioned? Other one I mentioned was Zier Addison. Zier yeah, Addison. Okay, the yeah. offensive tackle slash guard from Riverview yeah. Sumner. I'm going to give fans two guys that I think Florida's on the come up with. One of them being Jeremiah McLeod, yeah. the three star, probably going to be a four star at some point. Defensive lineman from Havana, Florida, East Gadsden. That's up in that uh, or Gadsden County uh, High, excuse me. That's up uh, just north of Tallahassee. He's been committed to Mississippi State for a few months. That commitment is, let's be honest, on shaky ground at best. Yeah. I think by the end of the week, he probably won't even be committed to Mississippi State anymore. Florida's involved. Georgia's involved. LSU's involved. We think LSU is probably would be Florida's biggest threat. What we're trying yeah. to figure out is, uh, you know, how hard is Florida pushing for him? We just don't know yet. I mean, you know, boards change often. I mean, I'm not saying they aren't. I'm just saying I don't definitively know that they are. Yeah. If they put the foot on the gas, if they are, in fact, deciding this is a guy they want. They're going to be very much in. It's going to be them or LSU. He visited the Bayou Bengals over the weekend. But, man, he's visited Florida a lot. He could be back soon. And he's coming back for an official as well. Uh, I mean, Florida's doing a great job there. Uh, Georgia hasn't recruited him as hard lately, so I wouldn't worry about them just yet. You know, the concern, obviously, with Georgia is you never know when they're going to go full throttle on somebody. And it's worth noting, while he goes to school in that Tallahassee north of Tallahassee area. He is from Leesburg, Georgia. That's mm-hmm. Lee County, Georgia, just north of Albany, as they say. And and, and that is, uh, that's Georgia country, okay? That is Mike Bobo territory. Uh, the offensive coordinator is from down in, in South Georgia, Southwest Georgia. So that would be a concern, but right now, Florida, LSU. And then here's another one, Corey. This one's really interesting to me. This Floyd Buchar, okay? He is the big defensive lineman, from uh, Miami Central, but uh, I'm looking up his profile right now. I'm trying to find this. But the interesting thing about him is even though he plays at Miami Central, he is actually from Montreal, okay? So he's a guy that was in Alabama last year. Now he's down at Miami Central, 6'2 and a half, 315. He looks like that big SEC NFL defensive lineman. He actually – was kind of – nobody really knew who he was, Corey, until the Under Armour camp earlier this year down in South Florida. And, and man, he was – I think he was MVP of the defensive line. And then also mm-hmm. just his body. I mean, he yeah. just looks like a dude. Now, there are always going to be guys whose bodies are misleading. Warren Sapp being one, best defensive lineman I've ever seen play in person. Saw him without his shirt on in a Bucks locker room, Corey, and he looked worse than you or me after not working out for three years. Okay, so <laughs> – but freak of nature, right? Yeah, yeah. Floyd Bucard looks like a freak of nature physically, and then he's got a lot of tools to go with him. So this is another thing where fans on our message board are saying, oh, God, another three-star. And and we don't always take Florida side. In fact, people think we're too negative a lot, Corey, but uh, yeah. the reality of it is, is they've done an excellent job of identifying three-star guys. And, and in the case of Enoch Wangoy, the uh, offensive tackle commit, a zero-star guy, now he's a high three-star well, Floyd Bucard is a three-star with a four-star offer list that's about to be a five-star offer list, and Florida's in very good with him. I don't know that they lead, but they're certainly one of the top two, three, four teams. Yeah. He, uh, Miami's a team to watch. He's right down there. Obviously loves living in Florida, he told me. Penn State is a team to watch, uh, and there's going to be others. But Florida, he just gets this great vibe when he's on campus, and yeah. he visited Florida twice in the last month, going to go back for an official visit. He's telling people, Corey, I think you mentioned that you know somebody, uh, we both do, in his in his inner orbit that say he really likes Florida. So I like the move that Florida has made for a guy, and I like the fact that they identified – we, we kind of sometimes say, oh, God, they're taking forever to offer, guy, offer guys. 
uh, but their evaluation team, their scouting department has done a pretty good job on a bunch of guys, and this looks like another one. They were in on them fairly early. They got them to visit a couple times, and now it looks like uh, Florida is trending in the right direction. So that that's five guys that we think Florida made significant progress with this spring, Corey. Um, mm-hmm. And, and you know, we'll see. Now, Corey, just if I was going to say there's two guys that you feel really good about, doesn't have to be from that group, yeah. just in general. And I should point out, we're going to take everybody's questions here, I promise you. Uh, but just two guys that you feel like, Corey, Florida's in a good spot with April 15th, 2024. Who would you go with? Yeah, I'm the one we left off, Nation Montgomery, another Miami Central Blue Cards teammate down at Miami Central. Um, another highly coveted receiver that Florida jumped into the mix for last year. He's kind of been up, up and down on certain boards, depending on which school you're kind of looking at. But he visited about two and a half weeks ago and really got the red carpet treatment. You know, he was in the huddle, you know, with Billy Gonzalez for their whole entire spring practice and was really up close and kind of being told, hey, we want you to be the face of the receivers class. We like you a lot. Obviously, they have an OV set. I believe it's from May 31st. That's another one. You know, Penn State and Florida are the only two schools with OVs. You kind of he's a he's a kid. He grew up in Maine. So he's not he's not a kid that's been living in Florida his whole life. So you can't look at Florida being oh proximity, it's close to home. He's only been in Florida for about a couple of years. So we'll kind of keep tabs on that. Penn State's another school doing a good job. He was at Alabama this past weekend, yeah, but he's one of them. The other one we'll just keep going on is Caleb Singleton. You know, I think Florida obviously is in a great spot for him and bending it. But bearing any changes, I think he'll ultimately be in the class at some point, but he's going to take his time and take some visits. Well, we both got burned on Hilton Stubbs, another safety from Jacksonville. It's like, although that yeah. recruitment's not over. He's committed yeah. to Southern Cal. Nobody thinks that recruitment is is, is near the finish line. Uh, yeah. Florida people, we've talked to a lot of Florida people you know, off the record, obviously, and they feel like, hey, Florida's still in it with Hilton Stubbs, yeah. the, the four-star safety from Jacksonville. But Caleb Singleton, three-star guy, I think once the rankings people across the country – Start getting a hold of his 100 meter times yeah. and look at his length. So he's six. What do we say about length? Six foot one, 175. Very yeah. good length for safety. He's going to fill Corey, out nicely too. Good frame. Corey also uh, best 100 meters time recently that we know. I haven't checked his numbers in the last two to three days, but he's clocked at 10.54 mm-hmm. 100 meter. I mean that's getting in pretty rarefied, not rarefied air, but pretty. Uh, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. It's he's fast as hell. How about that? Yeah, yeah. And and you know again we talked about uh, earlier a uh, four star running back commit Waltez Clark running a 10.82 last week and and Florida being just ecstatic about that because man this guy can do everything catch the ball out of the backfield he can run he's got great uh, one cut ability but yeah. so this guy Caleb Singleton runs a 10.54 and he's only a three star people are going to notice him this spring again. Yeah. The spring evaluation period, which begins today and runs through the last week, I think it ends like May 25th this year, gives schools uh, opportunities to go across the country and see guys practice. So recruiting boards shift a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, A a lot of times a kid visits you and he looks great, then you go see him in practice, and boy, he doesn't have the quick twitch that you thought you saw in film. And, you know, so the board will shift. This guy, Caleb Singleton's a guy we both think is probably going to start picking up more interest. And then obviously just a few weeks ago, Corey Raymond at LSU offered, and and it's kind of one of those things when Corey Raymond offers a DB, what was that old commercial probably before your time, Corey, when, when EF Hutton talks, people listen, that was a financial organization. Mm-hmm. When when Corey Raymond offers somebody, and obviously he didn't have the recruiting success at, Florida, success at Florida that people wanted, but when he offers somebody, people take notice. So Caleb Singleton, we think Florida's sitting in a great spot with him. They prioritized him over anybody else. Uh, uh, or he feels like a priority, to, more like a priority than uh, he he does with any other school. He visited the other day uh, for the Orange and Blue game and was there in the stadium a couple hours after the game. Got When he left the building, who was he with? Secondary coach Will Harris, yep. who's putting a lot of effort into this recruitment court. I love that pick from you, Caleb Singleton. Another guy, and you gave a couple guys, another guy I feel really good about. This one's going to be like a no-brainer, but it's C.J. Ingram, the son of Gator great Cornelius yep. Ingram. Uh, he plays quarterback at Hawthorne High. Little old Hawthorne High. Gosh, Corey, I go away to Georgia for 12 years. I come back, and Hawthorne High, High is a state power that's winning multiple state titles. Yeah. There used to be nothing, okay? Cornelius Ingram's done a hell of a job out there. Yeah. Uh, and his son has led them to back-to-back state titles at, at quarterback. Now, he's also a, a heck of a basketball player, averaged over 20 points a game as a combo point guard. Uh, but Florida likes C.J. Ingram at the receiver position. He yeah. loves Billy Gonzalez. He loves David Decker the assistant wide receivers coach who we talk about a lot, man. We used to not mention these guys 
And now they're playing such a vital role. A lot of the guys that aren't technically on the field, David Decker loves him. Uh, CJ loves the fact that these guys are technical freaks. I mean, they are, they're trying to make you better every single yeah. day. According to very, him. Very detailed. Yes. Very detail oriented. And obviously again, this is a, a position where fans want to see bigger name recruits. I get that. Uh, but I'm only relaying what CJ Ingram says. So uh, what's his recruitment look, look like? Well, again, this is a guy that doesn't have a lot of offers. So if you're a Florida fan, you're probably a little worried. But, uh, you know, uh, from my point of view, I think what's sort of happening here, sometimes with legacy recruits, not all, hadn't happened with Vernell Brown, but I think people are looking at this recruitment and saying, is he lives 15 minutes from the University of Florida, goes to school 15 minutes from UF. His dad was an all-SEC player there. They are into that program. Not worth our time. Yeah, that's, I think that's impacting his recruitment. Uh, the truth is, he is fairly open. Louisville is involved recruiting him at quarterback. In fact, not receiver. Where Florida's yeah. recruiting him, he's going to go up there. Louisville also said, "Hey, you can play basketball here too." Look, they need players, obviously, on both of those fronts. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to look uh, hard at Louisville. And I think Corey, he's going to be a guy that gets a lot more attention this spring. People are yeah. going to go out to to Hawthorne High while they're in Gainesville, while they're going to see Jarquez. Carter or out of yeah. Newberry, they're going to hit that whole area, and they're going to see that this guy's in the six three range. He's got super long arms. Okay, he can play safety for God's sake. Oh yeah, you know, freaky athlete. I've got all these videos of him doing dunks. I mean, he could put you, he could sit you in a chair and fly over you and do a reverse dunk. Six, like, six five point guard. I mean, he has yeah. great size. Yeah, he's got everything Florida wants. They need that big receiver. Uh, so I love where they sit with C.J. Ingram. Right. And I, I was going to add, too, because I thought that was a great point you made, Keith, with him being a legacy. And he's a kid doesn't camp too much, too. So it's kind of one of those situations where Florida knows about him and, like, schools don't want to obviously take the time. But he also doesn't camp too much. So I think, Keith, what you said, too, if a school gives him the chance to play quarterback like Louisville, that's where I think it could get interesting. But I'm, I'm with you. I like where Florida yeah, it, it could. Uh, yeah. Corey, you know, one other guy that I want to mention, if I get backtrack, guy that we think Florida's made a significant progress with this spring, and it's a guy I just mentioned, Jarquez Carter, the defensive lineman uh, yeah. at Newberry. Florida didn't offer him it when the previous defensive line coach was here. Gerald Chapman comes into town uh, this winter. Florida makes a quick uh, offer and now has started to make a significant move. He's visited Florida, gosh, four or five times already yeah. this year. He'll be back for an official. I want to say it's that May 31st weekend. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools involved with him, obviously. Uh, but Florida's made significant progress. He loves Gerald Chapman. And we're going to talk about another uh, another off-the-field guy. i got to look the name up and make sure I get this right. That's playing a significant role here. Lewis McLeod, defensive line assistant coach. And uh, he's from Gainesville. Well, Jarquez, I always want to say Jarquez Hunter because the guy used to cover another yeah. school, Jarquez Hunter. Yeah. Played it, it or plays at Newberry High. So again, the local connection. He knows Lewis McLeod, the assistant defensive line coach of Florida. That's helping Florida. He's trained with them before. So uh, I feel like they've made significant progress in him. Corey, yeah. give me one guy you think Florida. <laughs> you're not you're not loving their chances right now. You know they visited, but eh, I'm not digging this one too much. I mean. There, there's some guys, I mean, you kind of look at, I think even Jamie French. Jamie French is one that comes to mind. I know he's not from Jacksonville. There. Say it one more time. You're not optimistic there? No, I think, I mean, you look at Mandarin, you know, obviously there was Hilton Stubbs, you know, Tramel Jones, but I think they got Jamie French on campus last week, but he went to a camp this weekend. And, you know, according to our on three colleagues, he's focused on five schools and Florida wasn't listed as one of them. And we all knew that Florida had ground to make up. You know, Billy Gonzalez – you know, first met with him last summer. Then they got his mother on campus a week later. You kind of saw, you know, some, it was a little bit of momentum there. And, you know, obviously then he decommitted from Alabama. So you thought Florida, probably, the yeah, the school closest to his home as far as a power forward school could make some momentum. But I thought after last week, you know, maybe, you know, stuff could kind of move in the direction yeah. a little bit, some possible momentum. But right now Florida is still on the outside looking in, according to our on three colleagues. So that's the guy I think Florida will continue to recruit. I mean, understandably so, but it's going to be a tough pull. All right, just to let everybody know what the plan is moving forward in the next 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to tell you a guy I don't think they've made much progress with. Then we're going to talk about a Florida-Auburn battle. Everybody knows, everybody wants to give me hell for talking about Auburn all the time, but we got a we got a great Florida-Auburn battle going on right yeah. now. We're going to talk a little bit about the quarterback position for the 2025 class, and then we'll take everybody's okay. questions. Uh, I need to do one quick promo right now, though. Uh, I've got to find this because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, let's see here. 
I always love your honesty. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm I'm trying, man. All right, so we got a special deal right now. Uh, we got to do the plugs, man. I mean, this, this, no, I can't. Corey, Corey drives a Maserati. I just bought a hundred and fifty thousand dollars souped up Tesla. Uh, we've got a lot of bills to pay. Uh, a lot of bills. Yeah, a lot of trips, first class tickets, you know that kind of stuff. Right now, and and it's really just for YouTube. All right, and we're doing this for YouTube. Uh, to see, we're, we're, it's, a, it's actually a great way to, to grow Gators Online, but also if anybody's interested, you're probably not. It helps us track um, how many people watch this show and then go to our site. So for right now, you get two months of Gators Online for $1. Usually it's one month for $1. So, hey, look, I mean, that's a, hey, a deal's a deal, right? Two months of Gators Online for $1. Use that code down below, UF1, okay? That's specifically for this YouTube show and all of our YouTube shows. So use that code. All right, Corey, the guy, I don't think they've made any move, but uh, you know, I know Florida has been talking about a Kalen Deer, four-star running back from Quinton in Mississippi, committed to Ole Miss on March 30th. He's supposed to officially visit Florida on June 5th. All indications are that trip is still on, but I talked to somebody last night that said, and they're in Mississippi, and they said, it's going to be hard to get him away from the Rebels. So I, I trust my people on the ground in Mississippi. We all know how hard it is to get people out of that state. That's why it was oh, yeah. so big that Florida got four-star running back Kane and Daniels away yeah. from Mississippi State last year. That was a hell of a recruitment by uh, by Jabbar Jaluk, the running backs coach, and then Billy Napier and everybody else. Involved. But not loving Florida's chances with Kylan. I want to say Kalen, a Kylan deer, four-star running back. Yeah. All right, Corey Malik Autry. Malik Autry, a really good player from Opelika, Alabama. It's 10 minutes from Auburn, four-star defensive line. He's been committed to Auburn for like a year, but he's visited Florida six times now. Multi I, think, I think it's actually seven. I know he yeah, said six, too. No, he said six. That's what I went with. I don't even think he can keep up with these men so much. Well, there you go. Multi-day visits. Was just there over the weekend with the entire family. He's been there so many times. He says it's now neck and neck. Now, Corey, our Auburn people – say, wait a second, pump the brakes on that because Auburn continues to feel outstanding on that. They're, they don't really seem to be concerned. But what's your gut telling you on this one? I, I, I'm, I'm starting to buy in that Florida may have a shot. I'm buying in a little bit. I'm buying in a I've always felt like Florida's right there. I mean, I've always felt like that's – it's always been his number two school. And I think it is neck and neck. I truly believe him on that. He's seen everything at Florida. I just think when it gets down to crunch time, it gets down to December and he has to sign and – I mean, simple stuff is just driving around your local area at home, just knowing your familiarity. He's not too far from Auburn's campus. I feel like that's going to be the tilting point. And I know a lot of kids will say neck and neck. And like you said, our Auburn colleagues will do such an outstanding job. And there, there's a strong belief that he is going to stick with the Tigers. But it, it's to have every time he's came down to Florida, like you said, Keith, it's been a multi-day visit. He's seen everything Florida has to offer. I think it also will come down to on-field play. You know, I mean, if Florida starts playing very well, and they surprise a lot of people, I think that can improve their chances. But if Auburn's winning a lot and Florida's struggling, and then proximity is on Auburn's side, that's where I feel like it's going to shift back to Auburn a little bit more later in the year. But right now, man, it's, it is close, but I'm sticking with Auburn right now. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't know what to think. I used to joke about to you all the time, Corey. We always joke writing? about him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why are you writing about this kid again? I yeah. think I actually told you, quit writing about him. Well, no, I, it's like, hey, we write about yeah. him too much. I know you know it's true. <laughs> like, it's but funny. he keeps visiting. He keeps visiting. So we, we will see. I just don't know what to think about that one, but it's an intriguing recruitment. Uh, and His recruitment is to the point now, if I see him in the state of Florida, because I, I saw him at UCF and I said, yeah, hey, I'm going to see if he's going. He's like, hey, I'll be there tomorrow. I said, oh, my God, here we go, number seven. So yeah. we'll see. Though He's a great kid, man. He handles the recruitment process well. And I know deep down in his heart, man, it is probably tough. But, yeah, I think Auburn has to still feel confident. All right, Corey, uh, let's talk quarterbacks here and then we'll get to the questions. It looking, it's looking like there's kind of four quarterbacks Florida's focused on in the 2025 class. Uh, let me see if I can remember the names. Ryan Montgomery uh, from Ohio visited Florida last weekend. This coming weekend, he'll be at South Carolina. It's really looking like those two teams are out in front of the pack. Georgia also still somewhat involved. They missed out on Matt Zollers, who picked Missouri, but they're recruiting some other guys. We don't know where Montgomery sits on their board. Obviously, we think if Georgia pushes – they become a major, major player, maybe even the favorite. But for right now, we think Florida, South Carolina. Some people think South Carolina. Then you've got uh, Antoine Hill from the state of Georgia. Says Florida is pretty much recruiting him harder than anybody. Uh, and he's from that Warner Robins area as well. 
And then you've got, uh, let me see, Keelan Russell, the SMU commit from Dallas. I checked in with him this morning. We're not hearing a ton of buzz about Florida. You know, SMU apparently is putting together some pretty good NIL packages to keep him. We hear that Texas could get involved or, excuse me, mm-hmm. has gotten involved, may offer. That would change the dynamic of his recruitment. Um, yeah. And but he said he's still visiting Florida in June. I talked to him this morning. So that visit is still on. Um, and then also an, another one, a new one that's an old one, Tramel Jones, mm-hmm. the Florida State three-star quarterback commit, who I think is a four-star. The guy, he may not yeah. be 6'4 and all that. Man, he's got a gun and yeah. um, a smart guy, winner. I love that. I love the winners, Danny Werfel, you know, those guys. And um, he visited Florida last week, may visit Florida again. Not going to be easy to flip them, uh, but if there's one other team involved, really the only other team involved in his recruitment is Florida. He mm-hmm. likes Florida. He keeps visiting. Uh, but, Corey, if you had to pick one of those four, well, well first of all, what what do you think? I mean, Florida's not going to tell us, obviously. If they tell mm-hmm. us who the number one on the board is and they miss that guy and mm-hmm. they look back, and then they got to go tell the other guy, no, 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 those guys were wrong. You were really the number one guy. But <laughs> yeah. in your opinion, who do you think is the number one guy on the board and why? I, I think right now it's Ryan Montgomery, just based off how committed they've been to his recruitment as far as hosting them. And I think also it's just there's just a certain type of buzz. You can just tell when he comes down that Florida South Carolina battle has been so tough. And he said it all the time that Ryan O'Harris is for a long time, that was his best relationship in recruiting. That was a uh, coach recruiting him the hardest. And he told me that last summer. And I always kind of kept that in mind. And here we are. I think Florida def- I think. Right. Antoine Hill's another one, you know, because you hear about him. He had an eye opening visit about two weeks ago and really got the red carpet treatment. I think it's so close between those two. But I think it, in my opinion, I think it's from what I've heard, Ryan Montgomery and then Antoine Hill and Keelan Russell and then Tramel Jones kind of in that second group. It's tough. Like you said, it's a great it's a great question. You just threw my way because you can go. You can make a case for either one. I I mean, Russell's probably the most dynamic and probably has For the sure. highest upside of them all. Antoine Hill's got a really high upside, too. Uh, but let's not undersell Ryan Montgomery. He's got an upside, yeah. and he probably – I mean, if you ask me, if you're looking at the film, he's probably the best of the group right now. Um, and he's probably physically ready, too. Too. Probably the most physically yeah. ready one, too. And then, and then the other thing, you know, Tramel Jones – and people don't want to hear this because he's committed to FSU. All that guy does is win. He's just so smart out there. And then he camped. Corey, we saw him, you and I saw him camp in Orlando this spring. His arm is a lot stronger in person than I thought it was. I saw them play last fall, but it was a it was pouring down rain. It was in the yeah. mud. He wasn't getting much zip on the ball. Boy, he's got a strong arm, and he's got it up here. So you did, you know, I like all four of these guys, but I would say if I could have one, maybe Russell would be the guy. But he seems like maybe in the pecking order of who they can get, yeah. he may yeah. only be. Th- Third, you know what I mean? I mean, so do we agree that the, the best chance is probably with Hill and my and then maybe Montgomery a close second? Yeah, I, it's it's funny because I think it's even closer now after hearing Hill's comments when he visited recently. It, it kind of felt like, man, he was thinking about making a decision. Um, and that's the, that's going to be the interesting part. What if Hill comes to Florida saying, hey, I want to be a Gator, but Montgomery still in that decision mode. Florida could have a decision on their hands how they're going to play this out, but it's a good problem to have if that does happen. Yeah, and, and so Montgomery, we should point out, could potentially be the first domino to fall because he wants yeah. to have a decision in May, even before the official visits. At that yeah. point, he will only officially visit the school uh, to which gains his commitment. So, you know, we're going to get some clarity pretty soon here. So I, I suspect yeah. by mid-June, Florida's going to have a commitment in the class. Uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, Keelan Russell's interesting because he's got some interest in Florida. Now, uh, does he – Sitting behind DJ Lagway, is that a deterrence or is that a situation where he says, hey, this may be better for me, all these guys, Mm -hmm. because if he's really good, I'll only have to sit behind him two years and then the job's mine. Yeah, You know, if he's just okay, it may be three or four years before I'm a starter. So, you know, you can see both sides of that. But uh, I feel decent about Florida's quarterback recruiting. And and we should point out, Florida feels like they're in it with Ryan Montgomery more than the crystal balls and the RPMs say. They feel like they, yeah. they think it's a coin toss from what we're told. And, and uh, now that's not, hey, we're getting the guy, uh, but that's not, eh, it doesn't look good. It's it's a coin toss. And I think that's feel- another kid where truly the family is still evaluating. I don't think the family even knows where they want to go yet. And real quick, as I came on Russell, I know people see SMU yeah. committee. Yeah, I know Florida fans. But just to remind people, he did just he's a top hundred kid overall right now. So he's a kid that I think people look and say, we're talking about Rutgers earlier, you see SMU. This kid's an elite talent. 
who's really on the rise and is, keeps rising in the rankings. So I just wanted to throw it out there. You know, well, and a couple start. other things. Rhett Lashley, the head coach at, at SMU, is one of the bright up-and-coming young yep. guys. And former SEC assistant, uh, was a yep. backup quarterback at Arkansas, knows the lay of the land in the South. And SMU guys, if you don't know, and I, I know a lot of you do, one thing they, they're not short on in Dallas at SMU is money. Okay, they will have and probably already have an outstanding NIL situation for for this young man. They're going into a power five conference. I'm sure it's the ACC, but it's a power five conference. It's a big move for SMU. The program's gaining some traction um, and he's a local kid. They were in on him early. So him leaving them is going to be tough. It's going to be a difficult move for him. I mean, could it happen? Sure, but it's uh, going to be tough. All right. That's it for that part of the show. Let's take some questions. Lucas, Lucas Mann says, does uh, Hassan Longstreet going to Texas A&M? He committed to Texas A&M or Auburn, over Auburn on Sunday. He's a four-star quarterback from, I think, Centennial High School in Corona, California, about an hour east of Los Angeles. Does him committing to A&M help Florida with Antoine Hill? I think so. Uh, I also think, Lucas, that uh, because Antoine Hill had visited a and I don't know how hard A&M was pushing for him. Um, but also a and was getting involved with Keelan Russell. So they're filled up now. So you don't have to worry about them anymore. I guess you might have to say, okay, does Auburn now get involved with Antoine Hill? You know, different schools have different opinions of Antoine Hill, uh, just like they do with all guys. And so I don't know if they would make that move, but it feels like Corey of Florida pushes for Antoine Hill, they're going to have a real shot, real good shot. What do you think? No, 100%. And that's the thing, too, by talking to him, he's saying, like, Florida's showing him so much love. But like you said, when it comes to taking a commitment and the dominoes and when they fall, that's where it's key. And like you said, A&M was other school in his recruitment. And I think Duke was the third school that he showed significant interest in. He was going to take an OV. So traditionally, when you look like that, if you're Florida and you're going against Duke, you know, obviously another good academic school, but football – it's not even worth having the conversation. Yeah, I mean, two different type of expectations. So I think overall his recruitment, it favors Florida. That's where everything stands. And I think it's going to be interesting. They say going back, I don't want to keep rephrasing myself, but yeah. the dominoes are when they could fall. So, sure. Uh, Corey, it's not a recruiting question, but you and I were both at the spring game. Muddy Waters, a great musician, asks uh, a name no one is talking about that balled out on Saturday was George Gums. That's the edge transfer from Northern Illinois. Yeah. Former receiver – turned edge right or, or is he receiver turned tight end turned edge but he yeah only, that's what it was yeah he, yep. he only played edge like one season florida took him he had three and a half sacks and we're like wait a second how did you get how did you do that evaluation flipped him from cincinnati which you know has done had some great defenses in the last decade or so uh yes he did look pretty good saturday and florida is going to definitely definitely need guys like that to step on the, on the step up on the defense all right trey says good morning Rob says, what's up, Corey? Corey's got a lot of fans. Me, not so much. They get mad at me for interrupting Corey a lot. Well, uh, you said Rob's in here? That might be that might be Raccoon Rob. He's actually a member. Raccoon of Rob? Tell me about Raccoon Rob. What's, so, what's that all No, he's a, he's a Florida fan, but if that actually is Rob, he uh, posts on Twitter all day. He had a raccoon <laughs> stuck on his roof, and he would give daily updates on it. So I think that, that's my buddy Rob. <laughs> but, all right, Gustavus says uh, blue, blue, blue. Okay. Uh, Tom says, appreciate the in-depth information, and we appreciate you being here. Muddy's got another comment. Corey Raymond needs to retire. His last five defensive seasons have been off. Also, Muddy points out, I'm not concerned with Florida recruiting, especially with – actually, you know, I can post these. I don't know why I haven't been doing that. I'm, uh, I'm not concerned with the recruiting, especially with the spring game now over and the NIL collective at Florida getting more money from fans from the spring game. We will be all right. All right, Lucas has a question. I'm going to give this to Corey because it's a hard one. Do you guys think Florida lands Chad Gasper as running back number two in the class? I think it's a good chance. No, I mean, he had a great time a few weeks ago. I know he's going to set up an OV. Um, a big play kid from Texas. Kind of the same type of thing. Kind of under-recruited right now, but I know Jabbar Jaluk loves him. You know, they went out and met with his yeah. family on the road early in January um, when they visited school. So, no, that's a – he's definitely one of the more realistic guys, I think, for that second running back spot. Um, so we'll see how it plays. I think that's a good question. Yeah, Gasper's definitely one to monitor for sure. All right, Muddy asks, uh, is recruiting slow right now because the staff is focused mainly on the portal to bring in instant impact players uh, since they're on the hot seat? No, I, I just think, look, kids are in a wait and see right now. We want to see how Flo- – more of them are going to probably wait to see how Florida does in the fall. But also, you know, Florida didn't really hit its stride in recruiting last year until June. Camp season coinciding with official visit season. 
Uh, Noel Portagenon, I can never pronounce his name, the offensive lineman from Germany, camped at Florida early last summer, committed out of the blue, and that really started a run of commitments. So we're going to learn a lot more. Right now, five commitments is less than most of the, the top teams in the country, but it's right there with FSU and Miami. Uh, and so, you know, the time to panic wouldn't be now. It would be if they're sitting at six commitments at the end of June. Uh, but, yes, they are going to be focused on the portal. There's no question about it. Nick Delatory of Gators Online is going to have a story later today uh, that kind of spells it out. Here, here's what they're looking for. He's got a lot of great intel. Here's what Florida needs. And they do have some needs. Also, you're probably going to lose some guys, too. That's just the way it works. All right, Hub City Baby says he's a winner from Duncanville with a live, a live arm. I will take him. He's talking about Keelan Russell, the four-star quarterback from Texas. All right, Lavelle. Ryan Montgomery is going to South Carolina. He has no competition at the position. Maybe Antoine Hill or Keelan Russell um, from SMU. Him being local is the only factor with NIL. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of – like, I, I feel like you know, Florida thinks it's a coin toss with Ryan Montgomery. I still think slight, slight edge to South Carolina. Uh, but it wouldn't be shocked if Florida landed them, but maybe slight edge to South Carolina. So I think Corey and I both feel like it's more likely that they land Antoine Hill. But these things change fast. Corey? You know, I was just going to add, too, South Carolina gets the most recent visit, too. And I know that's – I mean, this kid's very calculated. It's another kid's taking a lot of multi-day visits. So I don't think being caught up in a moment is going to be a huge factor with them, but it is – worth noting that they'll get the final impression, get that final visit yeah. if his decision timeline stays the same. So that's kind of important to point out. And this is there. Rob's uh, little icon there. Is oh, that that's a, he has the pug. Yeah, that's him. What's is up, that Rob? Right? That raccoon Robert? Okay. What's up, Rob? Rob, we appreciate it. you and everybody stopping by. Yeah. Uh, we always say we're going to do more of these than we get lazy, um, but uh, we are going to do a lot more of these. We appreciate everybody stopping by. Let me do the promo one more time here. You got to find it. I'm not that smart with this stuff. And, uh, you know, right now you can get Gators Online two months. There you go. Two months of access for Gators Online for $1 and use the UF, use the code, the promo code UF1. So uh, that's it for this show. We appreciate everybody stopping by. We did a quick one, 37 minutes. For Corey Bender, I am Keith Niebuhr. This is the Gators Online Recruiting Show. Everybody take care. Have a great weekend. We got a lot of good stuff on the site right now, including my gut feelings, uh, where I kind of spell out what I think are – um, where things stand with a, a more than a dozen targets and, and current commits. Corey's going to have some stuff later on, just more elaborating on uh, guys that he thinks Florida's made a move with this spring. And we'll have more great stuff from throughout the week, and we'll both be on the road in the near future. We've got camp season, official visit season coming up. But right now it's big, Corey, because these boards are going to shift. Yeah. The staff, starting next Monday, the staff will be out on the road checking guys out across the country, looking at them in person, seeing if they pass the eye test. So a lot of great recruiting coverage coming. All right, Corey, we're out of here. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much.